Hello, welcome to the Friday, February 22nd, 2019 edition of the Sandnet Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. I think it was about last week that I mentioned that Adobe fixed a data leakage flaw in Acrobat and Reader. This was the issue where you could include SMB links in a PDF document and Adobe would happily try to download the respective files, sending your NTLM hashed credentials out. Well, it turns out the patch that you applied a week ago wasn't quite sufficient. The vulnerability still existed, even though in a slightly different version and Adobe today fixed this flaw again. Exploitation is pretty trivial in this case. It does affect Adobe Acrobat and Reader on Windows as well as on Mac OS. And the usual reminder, you probably really for sure want to block outbound port 445 that will block leaks like this at least from leaving your network. At the end of the month, Microsoft is usually publishing its non-security updates at the third Tuesday of the month. Well, it looks like this month, Microsoft sort of snuck in a security fix for IIS. This fixes a denial of service condition that can be triggered via invalid HTTP2 requests. What the attacker has to do is send a lot of settings frames. The HTTP2 standard doesn't really limit how many of these settings frames you can send. So it's technically not actually an invalid uh, request that's being sent, but eventually IS will hang and will stop responding and needs to be restarted. This update does add a configuration parameter that allows you to limit the number of settings requests per frame as well as per minute. If a connection exceeds that number, then it will just be killed. Currently, I haven't heard about this being exploited out in the wild, but uh, this doesn't sound to be terribly difficult to exploit. So definitely do update your systems. And Drupal released an update for Drupal 8.5 and 8.6. Uh, this update addresses a remote code execution vulnerability. It was actually already released a couple days ago, but only affects fairly specific configurations of Drupal. You have to enable the Drupal 8 core RESTful web services, which I believe uh, quite a few people do. You also have to allow the patch and post requests, which again is somewhat common. But in addition to the RESTful web services module, you have to enable another web services module. Like, and they mentioned that in advisory, JSON API or services, or then the RESTful web services in Drupal 7. So if you do all of that, then you're vulnerable. The problem is actually not directly. First, I uh, looked at it and I thought, hey, uh, maybe they're allowing uploads of files with patch and post. That doesn't appear to be the problem here. The problem is more that some of the fields being submitted are not properly sanitized. Now, typical best practice for a web server configuration is not to allow put and patch. However, in particular with RESTful services, you often do need put and patch was specifically developed for RESTful services. So that's why you may have it enabled for uh, these particular use cases. And then we got an interesting vulnerability in the Linux kernel that was patched. It affects the user space crypto API. Now the interesting part here is this API actually runs as part of the kernel. And since this is a code execution vulnerability, it can at least be used to elevate privileges to a root. There is some talk that this may actually also be remotely exploitable. Not really sure how this would work. It's a use of the free vulnerability. They are usually a little bit more tricky to exploit. Haven't seen a working exploit yet, but hopefully this will be something that you will find a patch for, for your distribution fairly quickly. The bug was present in the Linux kernel for about 10 years now and was just discovered by a developer at Huawei. 
And Tenable has a nice blog post showing how to exploit a flaw in Microtech firewalls. Microtech firewalls have gotten a lot of scrutiny the last couple of years. Now, uh, this uh, particular flaw uses the Winbox port on Microtech firewalls and routers. Winbox is a utility that you can use uh, to administer uh, these uh, routers. And the router listens on a port in order to accept connections from the utility. The problem is that the protocol being used to communicate between the utility and the router it does allow actually for requests sent to this port to be forwarded to another IP address and another port number. And this is what this exploit here uses. No authentication is required. All you need is access to this particular port, which I believe is by default port 8291. By default, Microtech firewalls this port on the WAN, so shouldn't really be accessible, but when has that ever stopped anybody? Well, this is it for today. Thanks again for listening. And by the way, I won't take any sticker requests via the website anymore due to my travel schedule. But if you're interested in stickers and if you happen to attend the RSA conference this year, look me up and I'll have a couple stickers with me and probably will drop a stack at the Sands booth. That's it. Thanks for listening. Talk to you again on Monday. Bye.